Michael Vaughan, if we had to assess England's performance, three chases out of three, they got one right. But in general, overall, can we conclude that their approach perhaps even backfired? Well, they, they've won three tosses as well. You know, throughout the whole you know test, uh, T20s and the, and the ODIs, they've pretty much won most of the tosses. And you know, they like to chase. Uh, they like to you know go out there and bowl, and they'll bat themselves to chase pretty much anything that the opposition get. Um, but they do play this aggressive, risky game. They do like to try and smash the ball into the stands all the time. It doesn't, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's no rocket science now that England are going to come out and play in that fashion. I just think when, you, when you're when playing in India, particularly in the World Cup in two years' time in 50 over cricket, you possibly won't get wickets as good as this one, you know, in every single game. And, you know, I don't think you win a World Cup by just playing one style of cricket. You know, we saw that in 2019, England to win that final. And I know they had a bit of fortune and, you know, the Ben Stokes run when he hit the bat and it goes to the boundary, the catch of Trent Bolt on the boundary. We won by boundary count. I know it was a bit fortunate, but they won the World Cup. But they won because they had to play quite smartly in the final because it was a, a, a low scoring game and they had to just hang in there. And Joss Butler in particular just played a smart innings. So I do think that they, they can play different ways. You don't have to look at the last 10 overs today, actually, with Sam Curran and Mark Wood. They played a smart game. You know, it wasn't just crash bang wallop. They used the brain. And, you know, I do think this England side has pretty much everything covered. I don't think the bowling is, is where it, I'd like it to be at. I think India have got a better bowling line. I think India will, over the course of the next two years, become a very, very powerful batting lineup because they will play this modern way and they will get to those 375-400s on a consistent basis. Um, my concern for England would be the bowling. You know, I, I think they've got a, a way to go in terms of bowling on these kind of wickets uh, to get them out of trouble. If, if the batters don't arrive and play well and get beyond that par, if they have an off day, you know, I just don't think the England bowlers will get them out of the hole. So um, that's England's kind of perspective. They play that fashion. I, I'm with you, Gautam. I think they have to play different styles to be world champions in two years. They had to do that in 2019. Um, but I have to say they're entertaining. You know, it's uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a team that I, I sit back and, and smile and watch and think, well, it's it, 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 it might come unstuck every now and again, and it has in this series, but, oh, gee, it's entertaining stuff. Yeah, as I said, uh, we were on uh, Crick Bus Combox, Joy, Michael and me, and I was referring to keeping a close eye on the Bahrain Grand Prix that was going on parallelly. And there was a reference to a couple of young rookie drivers who are very good when they drive. They're very speedy, very entertaining, but they don't necessarily go and win those races. And I think that's what happened to England today. You saw the consistency on that uh, innings progression, but problem is they'd lost seven wickets by over number 31. Yeah, absolutely. I think what is remarkable though is that from 168 out for six, that they took it to 322 is a testament to the kind of you know batting side that they are and to Sam Curran because I thought he's played a fantastic innings. You know, again, what I loved about him was that towards the end, you know, you looked at it and you saw some of the runs that he was refusing and you're wondering that, is he letting it off too late? He wasn't because he took his chances to go right up to 14 in the last over and with the kind of way he was striking the ball to be facing 14 to get the last over was an acceptable distance. He actually got it to a position where England could win the game. And he did it without taking too many risks before that. And I thought that was very, very smart, Patty. So he chose to take his risks in the last over. It didn't come off. Might not have. That's fine. But he gave England a chance to win. Michael, just to round off this discussion for Team England, uh, as we have a look one more time at what England's batsmen did today, you expressed a worry about England since the 2019 World Cup. They are the champions. They're the defending champions. Have they lived up to that billing? Well, they're, they're certainly putting 50 over cricket on the back burner. You know, Test cricket and T20 cricket is in the forefront because of the T20 World Cups and obviously uh, a big year for the Test team. But you only have to look at those results since uh, the 2019 uh, World Cup uh, drew in South Africa, only just beat Ireland, uh, lost to Australia, and now have lost to India. So uh, I don't think they'll be overly concerned. Um, you know, it's about peaking at the right times, and they'll want to peak around you know 2022 going into 2023. Uh, you look at this series in particular; there was nothing really from Josh Butler. You know, and he is such a kingpin for this England uh, 50 over side, and they'll know that when when the time's right and it's uh, it's kind of uh, the impact time for the team to be on it, Joss Butler will 
be available and, and playing well because it, you just feel that with Josh Butler, he's, he's, he's you know captain in for two games, you know behind the stumps, making all those decisions. Not easy for a wicket keeper to then go out and bat, having done that for 50 overs. Um, but he'll get better, obviously, and he'll be, you know, unquestionably um, better for the two-game experience of captain. Um, and as I said a, a couple of shows ago, it wouldn't surprise me at all by 2023 if Butler is the captain of the 50-over team. You know, two 2020 World Cups to go for Harry Morgan this year and next year, and he's already stated that that's his principal kind of thought process at this stage. Um, he'll hope to make 2023, and I hope he does because he's an outstanding leader. Um, but I just have a, a sneak suspicion that 2023, the 50 over World Cup, might be just a step too far for him.